discussion with the attorney God. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wow, what a week. What a week we had. You guys don't think we've had a week? I bet if you ask some of the people that were here Monday. <laughs> yes, we were. Paul, go on to the second slide. You know, the question is what makes you? What makes you? So I'm giving a disclaimer before I start. Preaching that we are to love our neighbor, welcome the stranger, and stand up for the marginalized does not mean that I am making a political statement. It means that I'm making a biblical statement. Amen. So I want to get that out of the way early. We have things going on in this country that stand opposed to the things of the Most High God that were explained through Yeshua clearly in that text. And as believers, we must stand as citizens of God's house before we stand for any other house. Yes. So as you tell people, no, you have, you are required to love. If the Holy Spirit revives, restores, and renews you, is it just for self-gratification or is it for the lifting up of those around you? We missed many opportunities during the week. Our brother Luke took time in this text to walk it out, to write it out. Next slide, Mr. Kaufman. This is about all of who we are as believers. He was speaking to the early church, but we have the same ailments as the early church. See, our gifts are not really about us, are they? Neither is our leadership. Your purpose as this born again child of the Most High God is not about you. Somehow, in the minutia of things, we started believing people that it was all about me because after all, I am a friend of God. A life of significance is about serving those who need your gifts, your leadership, your purpose. So we have forgotten that this story should awaken in us a remembrance of who we are before the Most High as a country. Because what's going on today and started yesterday happened to the Native American people before they even drug us here. And we only have to go look at the history of Israel to know, to know. Part of their being exiled was because they could not be kind to the strangers. They could not be kind to widows. They could not be kind to orphans. Hello, that's the mirror today. That's us. I need to know your status. Come on, the rock. Give me your paperwork. Show me who you are. Show me how you got here. Show me why you're here. And then I can verify that through my lens, it's legal. We're looking through the lens of God. Oh, if they had to check our citizenship for heaven, we would be in trouble. <laughs> we would never meet the standards, would we? It's not joy that makes us grateful. It's gratitude. We have been, as a country, ingrates. We throw thousands and thousands of pounds of food away a day while people go hungry. We walk and drive by the people under bridges, in ditches. See, Jesus is talking about someone who had a moment in the ditch of life. Whatever that look like looks like for you. I've been in the ditch of life more than I can count. And if it were not for people who could see me, who could hear me, who empathize with the pain I was going through. Would I be here? Would you be here? 
We all can say we got pulled out of the ditch. I can even remember to make this real for the young people being in the halls of school when I was younger. Because I was like a tiny tot. Lot of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and someone was going to beat me down. And I didn't understand. You know how you take that stuff? I ain't scared of you. Who do you think you are? And they're like, I'm going to knock you out. And all of a sudden, you see them start backing out with that cousin to my right and a cousin to my left. <laughs> I felt my help coming. I didn't know. Just felt that that person backed off. I right there was in the ditch. Because I didn't back down to anyone. I learned not to back down to anyone. And I was willing to take the punch. But thank God for my help. See, we have to be willing to take this punch. Did you see what the man did? See, what makes you get involved? What makes you hear those that people don't want to hear? What makes you rejoice? What makes you do it? Is it just because they hit the like today? That's one of my favorite songs. I had to just put, we in the sanctuary. 24-7, you are in the sanctuary. We have very few people in every denomination that will lift their heads and do what's right. So when the priest came out, that was the Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Methodist, AME, who I miss anybody? Church of God in Christ. That was a whole church that just walks by the ditch and ignores what's sitting in the ditch, a human being. Next slide. Do you pause and help you when you see injustice and hurt or like the priest? Do you just keep right on going? Somebody talk to me. See, the thing is, after all we do and don't do, our salvation is assured. Why? Not because of us. We're too sorry sometimes to even meet the standards of salvation. And I have to be very blunt. We're too sorry sometimes. You walk in the finished works of Jesus. You haven't done a thing. Not one of you have done one thing to merit the great gift that you have. But for some reason, grace chased you. And you found yourself sanctified and justified. Understanding the voice of God within you. Saying, Abba, you are a child. Father, that you now can cry out to God in ways you never have before. What makes you pause? What? Think about the times you've seen something that has stopped you dead in your track and cause you to do for someone what you normally wouldn't do. All of us are suffering. The most dangerous place to come into now and reveal all of who you are is church, people. Because we see a ditch moment as a moment to say, you need to repent. You just have a devil. You didn't serve God the way you needed to serve God. And today, all around this country, doors are being knocked on. People are asked to come out so we can arrest you, take you out of this country because you don't have your paperwork together. See, the Native American people, they got it. I'm not sure the African descended people have fully gotten it yet. The Japanese people got it. The German people, this isn't the first time we've played this biblical song. My question is, who decides who gets in the ditch this time? Hmm? Hitler decided it was the Jews. And the Christians went, up. Oh, we're safe. After all, they killed Jesus. 
until they came for them. And hear me clearly, saints of the Most High God, children who believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, don't think for a minute, citizens of heaven, they're not coming for you. Don't think for a minute that at any time someone can say, I need your papers. Uh-huh, yeah, I do. What gives you pause? Now, did that give you pause concerning your own safety? Can you imagine what it's like when one person has their paperwork and then you know all the cousins don't? Are you going to turn the cousins in? Will you be a sanctuary? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. If we were all perfect in the moment, 
I guess we just float on up to glory. That does not happen. <laughs> and who is my neighbor? That's what he said. And who is my neighbor? Jesus said, let me tell you this. A young man went to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Jericho, and some of the robbers in Atlanta jumped him, honey. They stripped him, beat him, and went away. And they left him half dead. By chance, like I said earlier, the AME and the Presbyterian and the Catholic and the Methodist and the Lutheran, they all were going down the road. And when they saw the man in the ditch beat up, stripped away with his clothes, near death, they got on the other side. Because after all, they might have left something and come back and make it us too. So likewise, the Levite, the priestly one came by. That's the preacher's job and the teachers and the evangelist, the televangelist. When he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, a Latino, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. Yeah, I had to change that. Jesus said, make it real. I made it real for my day. Make it real. At this point, the Latino community, they don't have nothing to lose. They already in trouble. Problem is, you think you're not. They were willing to stop and have pity on the person. So what makes you pause? Do other people's suffering cause you to pause? Next slide, Paul. Are you listening? We generally see what we look for and hear what we listen for. We're not listening, Christian community, for the suffering of others. You know how I know our Christian vice president can walk up in that place with his nose in the air, smelling the stench of those people having to not have a bathroom but do it all right there, and they could they all were standing. Some were laying. They couldn't all lay at the same time. Some had to sleep and some had to stand. No water. They were thirsty. Couldn't brush their teeth. That was our Christian example. If you're going to be biblical, be biblical. If you're going to be political, remember, this is a biblical statement concerning your political ills wrapped up as biblical. What makes you? What made you? We can all think about the great parents we've had, teachers, influencers, but what makes you? What makes you listen? What makes the preachers ignore the pain in their own cities and in their own churches? What makes us do that? What makes us discount the young people and not give them voice in our midst? What makes us do that? It's not the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't put that on the Spirit. Because first of all, I don't want to be con uh, considered blaspheming the Spirit, lying on her. What are you looking for? Are you looking for the one come up, the next step up? And not willing to look down and see a brother or sister that you need to pull up to the step you're on before you move on up? Are you listening for the babies that are crying? Are you listening for the young girls this week that are being paraded out? By some of the very people we have supported. Remember, this is a biblical Thing. This is not a political thing. This is biblical. But at the same time, we being not like Jehovah's Witnesses, we exercise our right to vote. So I'm, I'm going to speak on it. Christians, give voice to what is hurting. Give voice to other people's pain who can't speak or the mic is turned off so they can't be heard. 
Give voice to them. Have you forgotten that someone gave voice to you? Have you forgotten about all oh, the, the Europeans up north who were abolitionists and didn't see you as a slave? Have you forgotten that people came and said, no, God is hearing your prayers. Slavery is wrong. We're going to build a network so you guys can get out. That was against the law. Hello. <clears throat> Are you really willing to be a sanctuary? Yes. This is deep for me. I've been a suffering child who was fatherless and motherless. I can't imagine what those babies are going through. I can't imagine if somebody took Monica and Benet from me and Kitty. I couldn't imagine it that I didn't know their well-being. That in the midst of nursing them, they stripped them from me. I couldn't imagine it, people. And I don't care the position what Christian person walked in there did not voice that this is wrong. It's wrong, America. We're getting it wrong. You can do the same thing in a different way. I know what it is to know someone who is not here legally and they do something horrible. And I want to call the police. But their pain is so loud. My aunt had to talk me off of that ledge. Because I got in the ditch with the, with the real ditch people, the dirt. And I said, oh no, we're going to get her to put it. My aunt said, you hush your mouth. You will not do a thing. I'm a fighter. You will not do a thing. And what was done was wrong and could have deported that person and kept them from being part of DACA. And my aunt, the non-preacher, was more righteous than I. And she was the one who took every lick and And she said, you will not call. She had to tell all the cousins, sit down, <coughs> shut up. Because she made her family when we had not. And that's the We're all family. We're the human race. This construct of ethnicity is evil. It's evil. It doesn't matter. We're all God's children. All of us. Next slide, Paul. As you go this week, Think about this. What makes you serve people? We serve at work because they're paying us. Okay? How many times will you go do something at your job and they say, oh, by the way, you won't get paid for this? How many of you would go? How many of you know exactly what makes you rejoice. Even the superficial things. I will tell you, I don't care. Anytime you put that song on, I'm going to praise. But there have been times in the depth of my soul, in places where you don't feel good enough and you, you don't meet the human mustard in this country and you work as hard as you can. Oh, I used to work and borrow clothes because I needed money for school. And I'd put the Vaseline on my teeth and I, I would be in a pageant to get money for school. Knowing they would never allow, listen to me, never allow me to win. You know what my attitude was? You better give me first runner up because I need that $1,500. I had that attitude but at home, at my apartment. You talking about how 
how it hurt. I go sing my heart out. People like, oh my God, you have a great voice. Sorry, you were first one up. No one willing to pull you out of that ditch. What makes you stop? We know the things that made Jesus stop. What makes you listen? Think about wherever you are. If you're at school, in your own house, what makes you really listen and stop and rejoice? If you hear somebody uh, knocking out one of your windows, I bet you're ready, aren't you? Uh-huh. Do you hear them knocking out the windows of other people's homes? You're just glad it's not yours. This is the shout moment. We all have this ability because the spirit resides in all of us. We need to stir it up. No more being lazy Christians. Silent Christians. You didn't do it when Martin Luther King asked you to give voice. I'm not asking this morning. I think God has said, come on, y'all. You're my chairman. You can do a little better than that now. At some point, we got to clap back. I'm clapping this morning. I'm clapping back. This is wrong. This is not a Christian country if this is what we do to the least of these. You are not preaching the gospel if this is what you think is okay. Read what Yeshua said. If you don't love your neighbor as yourself and you need to know who your neighbor is, go back to the text. Everyone is your neighbor. Thank you, God, for bearing witness to me that I am a part of a country that's not perfect, but also bearing witness to all of us that we are a part of a government that is perfect, that is yours. And we need to exercise our citizenship rights from on high. And God, I think, as you've always done, you will never disappoint us. We might be standing in jail like Peter, but eventually you will send an angel to let us out, God. I thank you, God, for your mercy and your truth. I thank you for the young adults who are here today to hear this message. Be nice to the Latino community around you. You don't know which one of them are suffering in hiding. And if you see someone in a ditch, whether it's physically in a ditch, God, strengthen us to be willing to go to that ditch and pick them up. If a spiritual ditch is there, some people just get so mired down spiritually. Awaken us to the things we need to do to lift that person up. Give us more of those moments, God, that we are listening for you and your instructions. Even when you say you already know what to do, just do it. Thank you, God, that you live in each and every one of us. Thank you, God, that this isn't the end of the story. It is the beginning of it. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. All God's people say, Amen. 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 To my Facebook family, I make no apologies for all of my emotions, all of who I am coming through in this text. I do pray that it added a blessing to your life, caused you to think and even be critical sometimes of things around you. But I hope more than anything it causes you to listen and to pause and to give reasoning to why you rejoice. You know I usually try to come on live again on Sunday evenings. I will try to today. Blessings to you.